Dylan, thanks so much, and welcome to uh, the Bright Rock team. Thanks for having me there. You've, you've been with Western Province through the various age groups. Tell me about the kinds of changes as you do the step up from one age group, one level of rugby to the next. What does it take out of you as a player? Yeah, I think um, you know, playing, playing schoolboy rugby and making a Western Province uh, team is, is pretty special. Then once you sort of leave your schoolboy side and uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about going to class anymore and, and other things that can uh, sidetrack you from putting all your attention on rugby, you realize that it becomes a, a very a challenging uh, profession to be in. And I'm going through the age groups, like you said, under 19, under 21, and then slowly but surely making that step up to uh, senior uh, uh, Western province sides. You realize that um, you have to be more professional, you know, and, and sometimes the, the knocks that your body could take when you were 18, 19 years old take a lot, lot uh, longer to, to heal. So, um, no, it's, it's, been a, it's been a good... Uh, couple of years coming through the ranks and um, hopefully it can just continue and get better. I would imagine that the knocks get heavier and harder uh, as you progress. Emotionally though, do you feel added pressure from schoolboy rugby versus playing for the Stormers where you've got TV cameras on you? There's a global audience now, not just yeah. a few thousand people at the side of a school rugby field. Yeah, I think 100%. I mean, um, you know, some guys can... can, it can uh, it can, it can make or break you, the, the media and social media, those sort of things. Um, no, but uh, I personally tend to not uh, try and, and read too much into those sort of things, you know. Because, uh, like you said, like the one week you can score two tries and be the hero, and next weekend miss a kick to pole, then those people that were cheering you on the week before are now against you. So, you know, definitely emotionally, it takes a lot out of you as well. But, um, you know, that, I think that's what, what comes with the sport. Because you're the fly half, you're the man tasked with taking some of those pressure kicks. How do you adapt to that pressure, that, that, that attention on you, when you know it's all about you failing or, or succeeding? Yeah, um, you know, some, some guys love, love the pressure and love those pressure uh, moments, and others just buckle. But I think um, the most important thing is, is, is just to try and mentally block out everyone and, and um, just make it easier for yourself, you know. What I, what I like to do is, is while I kick, um, just sort of get that picture in my head of myself when I was a little boy kicking in, in the backyard, you know, kicking the ball around with friends and my brother. So uh, it make, makes things a little bit more easier, but um, I'm not going to lie, it, it does get pretty tough out there when, you know, every single pair of eyes on, is on you when you're taking that kick. Can you block out a crowd, a stadium crowd? I, I think it is close to impossible. <laughs> but, um, no, you... You try your best. I think you, every now and then you do get a little sidetracked. I mean, you concentrate for, to, for, to concentrate for 80 minutes is a, it's a tough job, but every now and then you do get sidetracked. But um, yeah, yeah and I think blocking out a crowd is, is a tough job, but um, I guess it's just part of, part of the job and something you have to do when you want to handle those pressure situations well. When you were the little boy kicking a ball around in your backyard in Strand, did you have your eye on playing for Western Province, playing for the Stormers? Definitely, you know, growing up in Cape Town and being so passionate about wanting to play rugby, like that's every boy's dream. You know, when you grow up and you're throwing rugby ball around, you always, you know, I was always just running around trying to do flip-flops like Brayton Paulson did. My mom wasn't very happy because she was quite scared I might break my neck or do something stupid. But, you know, you, you watch those guys play week in and week out on the, on the television and that's, that's all you want to do growing up. So I'm very, very, very lucky that I'm uh, one of the fortunate ones to be able to, to live out my dream while I'm still very young. When you were playing with your brother, did you adopt the personalities, the personas of Western Province players? Were you Brayton Pulsa in your imaginary yeah, I, games? Yeah, I, 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 I was also, always Brayton Pulsa just so that if I score, I could do that little flick flack here. Yeah. But um, I still I haven't managed to, to uh, get it right yet. What was it like then for you? Because you've had this ambition to play for the Stormers and for Western Province since you were a little boy. What was that moment like when you were told you're going to make your debut, a Curry Cup debut for Western Province against the Cheetahs? Yeah, I think um, it was it was a pretty rushed week. I think I, that um, the Monday morning of, uh, I I left Perth and got into to Cape Town, and um, it was I, I hardly had any sleep and I went straight to the training ground and when actually on my way to the training ground, um, our team manager 
Anka Chuppi told me, look, um, our fullbacks, Cheslin's injured and you'll definitely be playing this week. And I wasn't expecting it and um, I, I couldn't, couldn't get words out to say to him, uh, well, what's wrong, why is there no one else, whatever. I was just so happy that you know, I'm, I'm coming in and, and, and my dream sort of becoming a reality. So running out uh, that day in, in, in Bloemfontein was pretty special. Dylan, you, you had a significant change in your life when you decided to go uh, and play rugby in Australia, in Perth, for Western Force. What prompted you to, to make the break from South Africa? Um, I, think, I, I think I personally just uh, needed a change. I think um, I, I wanted to get away and, and experience something new. Um, I'm the type of person who loves change, and I, and I thought going to Australia would be a good thing for me. Um, I, I, I knew guys who were leaving to go to West, the Western Force as well, so I thought it would be a good challenge for me and, and to see where, where I'm at in my, in my rugby to try and go play rugby in a different country. So uh, I think it was a good change for me. I think um, going to, to Perth and, and playing for the Western Force, I came back uh, a little bit bigger and a little bit smarter in, the, in, the terms of, in, in rugby terms. And um, I think it's, uh, it's only benefited me as, as a young guy going over so soon and then coming back and then to, to be given the opportunity to play for the Stormers as well. I think it's done a, a great, great uh, deal for me. So I was pretty happy um, changing and getting out of my comfort zone. So I would, I would definitely advise any young guys who want to do the same to, to definitely go ahead and take that step. Do you say you love change because you can adapt easily? Was it, did you adapt easily to Australian living? Um, I, 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 do, I do love change, yes. I think, I think it's good for any person to, to change, to have a, have a bit of change in their life, you know. I think if things aren't working for you, you're not going to get anywhere by sticking to the same routine. So changing things up and mixing it up a little bit is, is perfect. And that, for me, I, I think was, was the best decision I could ever have made. I think adapting to a city like Perth is, was, was very easy because it's similar to Cape Town in so many ways. I mean, um, the family that, that took me in was, was very welcoming and they, ke they still, still keep in contact with me. And, you know, um, it, it was really a home away from home for me. I had guys over there who I'd played rugby with in Cape Town before. So that made the, the change that, that much easier as well. Was it difficult coming back to South Africa after having made the decision to go to Australia in the first place? It was definitely um, um, a, a tough decision because um, I obviously I'd played a couple of games for the force and I'd started to, to find my feet a bit. And um, I, I was really wanting to to stay on and, and further my career at, at the force. But, um, you know, like I said earlier, I was, it's always been a dream of mine to play for Western Province and the Stormers. So when that opportunity came, I, I think I just could never say no to it. And I think I was, I was ready to come back as well. I think I learned a lot of things over there, experienced different people, learned a few things rugby-wise. So for me, coming back to Stormers and Western Province was, uh, was a good thing, and I'm um, definitely no, not regretting that decision to come back. How had you changed? Let's talk physically. You obviously, you got bigger, didn't you? Yeah, I think um, the, the, my time off the field, I spent a lot of time in the gym. I got bigger, got a little bit faster as well. So, you know, that, that for me was, was a good thing. Um, just the way they train over there is, is so much different to how we do things over here. So that was a, a change for me as well. And, and trying to adapt to that was good. But, um, you know, changing me as a person, I think, I just I, I saw what life was like in a different country as well, and different experiences for me. So I think I, I came back, I wouldn't say much more mature, because I still like to have a bit of fun every now and then, but I think I, I could just see things a different, in a different perspective to what it was when I was still living in South Africa and playing for Western Province. And as a rugby player, you, you say you're faster, bigger. In terms of the way you play the game, did anything change there? I don't think so. I think um, I've always been a, a sort of free running, trying to, to, to give the ball some air type of rugby player. So um, I think that's one of my biggest assets, and I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm an attacking threat. So the way I played over there and the way I'm playing over here currently in South Africa, I don't think anything's changed. Dylan, you were earmarked for success when you were a youngster playing for Bishops. Have you, have you lived up to expectations, your personal expectations? Um, I, th I think it's been... Um, a good good start so far. I think obviously, personally, I'd like to, to go on and achieve higher honours and 
that all comes with, with playing good rugby for DHL Storm in the Western Province. So, um, personally for me, I don't think um, I've lived up to expectations just yet, although people would, would tell me different, but um, you know, obviously personally I have my own goals and my own ambitions, so I think I still have a, a long, long way to go to, to living up to, to those people's expectations of me. And when you look at your career so far, are there particular moments that are stand out in your own mind? Games, moments that you particularly yeah, relish? Definitely, I think um, for me the, 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 the three biggest highlights of my career would definitely be um, when I made my Stormers debut um, last year against the Bulls uh, at Loftus and I managed to score a try as well so that for me was a very special moment and then in 2012 I was part of the um, uh, baby box who beat New Zealand in the 2012 Junior World Cup and then also just the whole 2015 season with the Stormers for me was really every every weekend when I got opportunity to pull that jersey over my head was very special to me so you know the 2015 season was, uh, was, was, was great and it's come to an end now so I'm hoping for big and better things in 2016. Dylan, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Thank you very much. And we wish you all the best for 2016. Thank you very much, sir. And I hope with that Bright Rock logo on your jersey, you're going to go even faster than Thank ever. You. Thank you. Yes.